Well, good morning, y'all. Hi and welcome. You are watching a Sassy Pants Knitter short. I am attempting to figure out how to live stream and um, hopefully it won't be disastrous. So thank you for so much for tuning in. I hope this works well. If it doesn't, I will just pull it down and do a regular episode, but I have been knitting on a lot of things and I just figured that it might be easier for me to update you guys in a shorter format. Um, although I do not podcast very often, um, but I did want to show you guys that. So uh, we're hanging out in my kitchen. It's about 7.30, 7.40 on a Sunday morning. I have been up early because of the kitten contingency and I figured I would just, I would try this out. Okay, so for those of you who are new and have stumbled across this, the stream, I'm Wendy. Um, I go by Silly Fruit on Ravelry and on Instagram. This is for knitting content. Um, so let me just get into it. I do have two finished objects and um, some finished spinning because Tour de Fleece is going on right now. And um, and another, like a longer term, I almost had a finished object and then realized that I needed to pull something back. So let me show you guys that. I am happy to show you guys, I finished this. This is the Violet Waffles. Um, what I'm calling the Mohair Waffles hat because I finished this, this is a pattern that I knit as part of the Down Cellar Studio Knit Along, Down Cellar Studio Splash Pad Party. And I wanted to show you guys, because I am so well organized around uh, streaming live, that I had everything ready to go. I think I just, you know, hit the record button and here I am. So let me show you guys this. So Violet Waffles is a free pattern on Ravelry and I had seen it before on a couple of podcasts and this finished out my um, Down Cellar Studio X Games submission um, because the other thing that I finished that I will show you guys on another recorded episode is the banner, the bunting. I finished all 18 bunting flags, hung them up last Sunday or Monday. I hung them up on Monday. They look awesome. But I did finish this hat and I want to tell you about it. What is that? Okay. So this was knit with um, mohair from Knit Picks. So this is uh, Violet Waffles, which is a pattern by Halora J on Ravelry that is free. Haldora J, excuse me. I'm so awesome at this. I'm sure you can tell. So. I took a uh, skein of Soul Surfer by Twist Fiber Studio, my friend Ashley, and held that double with some Knit Picks Aloft, which is their mohair blend in the tranquil colorway because it was on sale and was very reasonably priced. Um, the Pom Pom is one of the Wish.com experiments that I did towards the end of last year. Um, and you're not going to be able to see it, but it does have some darker tint on the very end of it. So this is what I think. I think that this hat is awesome and precious and I like it very much. However, um, also I knit this and it was my first time really, I know it's really popular to hold mohair with something right now. And I, I get it. I was totally glamored by it. However, this is itchy <laughs> to me. So I think it's it, it's going to be very warm because believe it or not, it does get really cold down here sometimes. Um, but for me to really wear this the way that I want to, I'm going to have to um, pick up and knit a lining because it just, I wear it a couple times. I've worn it a couple times since I finished it and um, it looks cute and I like the colors, I like the color combination. This yarn, actually, if it were not knit with the mohair, would, would look more like this. So you guys can see the difference. Let me move this around the mic so you guys can see. Um, the Aloft was like a tranquil blue, hence the tranquil name, but um, I will tell you, I'm going to have to find some DK and DK weight yarn, pick up and knit, knit a lining because I, I really love this hat. I love the way that it looks. I love the colors on it. I think it's perfect. However, give me about three minutes. If I wear this much longer than that, I will be itching. So 
finished that very quick knit and that concluded my X Games um, submissions for Down Tiller Studio so that was cool um, but I did have I also submitted the skein for the Down Tiller Studio Slay the Stash so I had around 108 yards around 48 grams of the skein left and the rule with that is that you have to knit all of it so I actually was a little proud of myself. I did some maths and figured out that if I held this double, I could go and work on the outdoorsy pattern, which is a, I think it's a free pattern by Fiber Nip. Hang on a second, I will tell you. Um, I saw this pattern in fall of last year. I saw people test knitting it and added it to my queue and just never got around to it. But Outdoorsy by Lisa Beamer Cannon. And Lisa is the talented artist behind Fiber Nymph Dye Works. Um, so this is a pattern where you can knit this and it can be a headband, it can be held over, um, it can be also a neck warmer. So what I ended up doing is I took the leftover Twist Fiber Studio and then took actually some hand spun that was gifted to me by my friend Amanda um, that is from Fiber Nymph's shop in the, I think, Barbie, Malibu Barbie colorway and knit this pattern. Very enjoyable. Um, I think it's a perfect like messy bun hat also for me. I've just kind of worn it like this. It reminds me a lot of the um, calometry or calimetry that I wear a lot in the winter because it's got an open top. Um, so my hair is very thin so I could I attempted to rock the um the messy bun but with this hair it's just it's just not going to happen um but I have been wearing it because it's warm um and then you can kind of fold it over to double it and I'm going to be a big fat fail on that but um the way that Lisa has it styled on the actual project page with a couple of the models I think makes perfect sense so I don't even know where the timer is on this thing I'm just going to keep going, and if it is what it is, okay. Um, Tour de Fleece started last weekend, and I have been spinning quite a bit. Um, at the beginning of the year, I had set out to try to spin first thing in the morning, and then the tension spring on my uh, shack sidekick bit the dust, and it it ended up messing with my mojo. I had to go and order a new one, um, and that was fine, and I installed it, and then just never got back to it, and I have been knitting basically my way through a lot of my Highland Handmaid's fiber stash. I bought a lot of Keviet, or Cheviet, depending on how you say it, um, from Heather, um, and some really beautiful colorways, so I have two that I'm going to show you. One, actually, I spun um, earlier this year in March and just never fooled it so I actually sat down the other thing that is encouraging me to spin I don't know if you guys have seen this but Beck Gussler of Gussler Designs has created tags that are considered the mother of all tags because they are waterproof and you can put all the details because I don't know about you guys but I lose the tags that my fiber come with come when you buy the braid or the bump or whatever, I'm always misplacing them and losing them. So Beck created these amazing tags that I actually saw on another podcast. I saw Millie and Bella talk about them earlier this year. And when I saw them, I went and got them immediately because I knew that this was what I was going to need. Excuse me. So this allowed me to basically write all of the details around the fiber, the how I spun it, everything attach it to the fiber and then go ahead and soak it because it's completely waterproof. So this is my Hanks in the Hood bat that I spun um, earlier this year in March um, in Brevard. I left it as a single. I fooled it a little bit. I soaked it, forgot that I was going to fool it. So when I was drawing it, I zhuzhed it, which meant that I basically did like this with the fiber. That's the real scientific method way of doing it. I don't recommend it. I'm not really sure it's going to work, but I think it might. The way that the bat was created is that it basically um, ended up naturally barber pulling anyway, which I think is going to be fine to lock those fibers in. But I ended up getting 472 yards. And this is still a little damp. It's been very warm here and humid. So I have not really had a chance to, it's not dried yet, but the colors in it are beautiful. And I figured that this would make a really lovely fingering weight something. Most certainly not going to do socks with it, especially since I, it's more, it's a single. So I finished that. Um, the other one that I finished is Romper Room, which is from Highland Handmaids. And it is a red and blue blend, which is perfect right in my wheelhouse. I got roughly, 
I did a two ply, so I split the braid in half, spun it. Um, for those of you who do not know, my husband and I listen to electronic dance music. And Ultra Croatia was last weekend, and if you've watched before, you may realize, or you may have heard me talk about that, if you put electronic dance music on and put me in front of the wheel, I'm like a speed demon, and we were watching one of the sets last Saturday night, and I just basically knocked out the entire braid, which I highly recommend if you like good electronic dance music like we do. It's very effective for your spinning. So I finished this and got roughly 170 yards of a two ply. I've not soaked it yet. I've also got um, six ounces of another colorway from Heather that is currently soaking. Excuse me. Um, so this is what I've got. I think that this is going to poof up beautifully and be really, really lovely. And then um, let me see what else can I tell you. I've got two other, I took two other braids of her fiber, one in the Cranberry Mojito colorway and one in the Goose is Getting Fat colorway, and I put them out side by side and realized that they looked very similar. So I spun all of four ounces on one bobbin, all of four ounces on the other bobbin, and then sometime today I will be plying them together. Um, I'm not sure if that meets the technical definition of a combo spin, but that's it. That's something that I've not done before or I've not done here recently because I've not really spun a whole lot this year, but I've been doing that. And then the last thing I wanted to tell you guys is I last weekend finished my, sort of finished my desk chain, which is a pattern that is a sweater that I've been working on, um, put out by Quince & Co, um, designed by Leela Rab. I'm not going to get it right, you guys. Give me two seconds to pull up my project page so I tell you the right thing. Um, I got it right. Leela Ra Raib, R-A-A-B-E. Beautiful pattern. Um, and this is completely operator error on my part, but I ended up, it looks very different than the last time you guys saw it. Um, the last time you guys saw it, I was pretty much really close to finishing and bonding off, and I did that. Um, and because I'm knitting, I knit along with my friend Amanda who hosts the We Are Yarn podcast. Um, she had figured out how to um, knit it because the pattern, the way it's designed, you knit it and then you seam it together. And I'm not interested in any of that. However, um, what was what I even talked about, I think the last time I podcast is that I did have a concern that the armholes where I had joined was too shallow and it was completely right. It worked. I put it on, um, but for it to actually work and be wearable, it meant that I had to split the seam at the end of the, um, at the end of the join, um, to make room for my very ample biceps. <laughs> Let's just call it that. Um, but I, I do have large arms. My, my, uh, my granny wave is pretty effective. As I will say so um, I and when I did that it, what it meant is that it took the option of extending the sleeves down um, it's a great pattern written from very much positive ease but I am not a, a tiny person um, so for me um, even with splitting the seams it kind of has a t-shirt feel where it falls the t-shirt falls right about here um, and when I did that, again, it took off the option. I really like the way that the sweater looks when people lengthen the sleeve. I think it looks like it's supposed to have a three-quarter length sleeve. So I was on the fence and okay with that, but the reality also is that the shoulder was far too tight. Additionally, even though I knit the pattern to the length that it said, it was going to be too short. Um, for me, I'm 5'2", I'm a wide gal, and it meant basically it was not going to be, even with an aggressive blocking, it was not going to be nearly long enough. So I ended up pulling out the bind off and picking back up and I was just going to lengthen it and leave the shoulders alone but the more that I thought about it the more I realized this is a pattern a sweater that's knit on ten and a half needles it takes no time to knit at all at all so I pulled all the way back picked up the front and back side and I'm working on the back side because one of the joys of working with yarn that is really thick um, and knitting with needles that are really large is that it takes absolutely no time to fix it. So this is where I am now. And the joy of leaving it seamed at the shoulders is that I can get an even better fit. I can get an even better fit on how the arms, where, where I need to join. So the, I have knit the front part long enough where I, I feel comfortable about where it's going to sit so that I can 
put it over my neck, try it on, figure out where it's going to sit naturally, and then know when to join it. And so I'm in the process, honestly, of I just, I fixed it. I frogged it yesterday morning, picked everything back up, thought about it in my head a little bit, fixed it on the front end. I'm in the process of lengthening the back and then I will join in the round and I will go, 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 go. And hopefully the next time that you guys see me, I will have a finished sweater. Um, this is one of my favorite colors. I'm using the Queensland Tide, Riptide yarn. Hang on. Queensland, uh, Queensland Connection Collection, my gosh, Tide, which is a machine washable blend of cotton, alpaca, and wool. I'm calling it the coral colorway. So, okay, I think that that is it for me. I'm going to stop here, um, mainly because I want to see how this worked, um, if it picked up at all, and if it didn't, that's totally fine. And Bubby says hello, and I'm going to see how this, how this works. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I'm telling myself that more than I'm telling you guys, but thanks for hanging out for me with me a little bit this morning. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.